to the computer software, which happens to be a standard application um, that costs 150 bucks, I think, and it's called Train Controller. And it has an interface to Digitrax, and it runs the trains um, either in an automated fashion or you can run your trains under its dispatch control. Here you can see the train controller application. It's all across four screens. You don't need four screens. You can do it on one. I just was uh, feeling a tad extravagant. I hated scrolling across such a large expanse. The most important screen that you start off with on this application is you create your layout. You, have, you define all the points and all the routes of track and all the objects around it, and you build that up. Once you've created your layout, you then put all your locomotives onto it. So here I've got all my engines and all my trains are all um, specified in the big list here so the computer knows how to control them and also understands characteristics about them which makes it so sensitive to taking trains away from a standing start and operating at realistic speeds. So having defined all your engines, the next thing you have to do inside the train controller application is define the logical uh, architecture of the layout. You define all the logical blocks that there are on the layout. We have about 150 blocks that can take a full length train. And from each block there is a predefined path that you're going to take through a series of points to another block. For example, th this here is the platforms at Birmingham. And each of those have different paths out of the station. And you have to define all of those things so the computer knows what points to set to get from platform 4 to the dispatch line on the main line, or uh, from platform one down to the exit to the south here. Going on from there, you then create things called schedules, or in, in English terms, a route. And if I select one, I've got one selected here, you will see that there is one particular route that is slightly darker than all the others. And if I obscure all the others now, what this does in isolation um, and it looks a bit sort of skimp, but this is the path that takes a train from the green fiddle yard all the way out and back to the green fiddle yard and it knows which points to set, which routes to take and so on and so on. You can see the versatility that you've got in terms of defining you know, in an automatic action a train from any location to any other location on your layout. Once you've defined all of your schedules uh, or paths for trains to take, you can then put them into a sequence, coordinated sequence, in a timetable in effect. But that one I created earlier, the green fiddle yard to green fiddle yard, I run it at 6 a.m. in a sort of like a theoretical timetable, of which I can set the clock on this computer and I can set it to go faster than real time. On our layout, we have the clock running at six times real speed. So the next train that leaves is at eight minutes past six. That in effect is about a minute later in human time. And that goes from the blue fiddle yard. And then I have another one eight minutes later that goes from the red and just goes round the loop. For a simulated four hour, or four or five hour period, we'll run about 120 trains in that period of time. And we might have to intervene normally about five to 10 times during the whole operation uh, for the automated process. What I'm going to show you now is um, a sequence of train operations that are running through um, the layout and, and you're going to see the results of that looking onto the track. I'm going to start off with a clay goods train from Birmingham just running to the same location. I'm then also going to select the van train which has got a wonderful 9F pulling it around on the red main line. Again run it to itself. I'm going to follow that um, with um, a passenger train to go out from Manchester and go back down to the Red Fiddle Yard. I'm then going to follow that um, with um, a goods train coming through. And finally, I'm going to get the goods trains coming out of the sidings at Port Tarlington and just run them around the layout. And there we have five trains. So, let's sit back and watch.
all the electronics, all the specialist stuff is all off the shelf. It's a standard Pentium 4 PC running Windows XP. The only special component that I've got in there is probably the multi-monitor card that I mentioned earlier. Um, other than that, it's standard. And up here are the two components that effectively interface it to LocoNet. So trusty LocoNet comes in to these local buffer devices and that then comes through an RS-232 serial port that goes into the computer.